Hi everyone, this is Maya Blue. Zdravo svima. Ja sam Maya Blue. Thank you for tuning in again. This one is going to be a Q&A and I'm answering your questions. So I asked you to ask me questions on Instagram, on YouTube. Got some questions, not as many as I was expecting maybe. But then again, I also answer your questions on my podcast and maybe it's good that I don't have as many questions because this is not going to be half an hour long video. I did pick or select the questions. I kind of don't remember what they are exactly. So this is going to be very spontaneous video, very spontaneous answers and hope you're going to like it. Let's learn something more about me. Also, people who have asked me questions are going to stay anonymous. Um, maybe some people have some issue with that. I just, you know, I just Better not to put the information online than to re-edit the video and be like, okay, now it's much more work for me to go back and edit it again and then post it again and then I lose the views. And anyway, um, I'm not gonna say who asked me. The first question for me is, would you rather be attacked by every bird you see or every squirrel for the rest of your life? I think I would say squirrel and not because I think that they are less dangerous, but just because I haven't seen many and I feel that even if that would happen, it wouldn't be on a daily basis, but I see birds everywhere. <laughs> so imagine if they just go after me and attack me, I would probably be very, very scared. So I would say uh, squirrels. The second question is what kind of music I like and I'm just gonna give you a basic answer which is like everything. Obviously I don't like everything in the same way. Um, I like to vary different types of music depending on my mood, depending on where I'm in life and um, sometimes when I go out I usually like upbeat music when I'm at home and I'm I don't know contemplating or whatever I like classical music but my favorite genre would be some sort of mixture but of very very slow slow music. Sometimes slow would be like chill, sometimes it will be um, sensual, sometimes it will be kind of like slow sad, but I love the slowness of it. I don't know how to explain it. And some sort of like authors or like singers that I can give you are Janae Aiko, I think I told or mentioned her in one of my previous videos. I like Sabrina Claudio. I love her like very smooth sensual vibe i don't know how to explain it and also like random artists that are not that famous but i just like the vibe yeah i would say like chill relaxing slow music is my jam maybe because i'm so hyper and i need something to cool me down <laughs> i have serbian friends and i would love to visit serbia at some point where are the best places to go i don't know because i haven't traveled that much in serbia i am from serbia but um i didn't see the whole of serbia of course i would say well if you're first time visiting obviously you're gonna have to go to belgrade so um, i think belgrade is a as a you know good starting point if you want to see the agriculture some interesting architecture that I think maybe you should go to Sremski Karlovci, also Subotica. Um, but if you want to see more of like the nature and the hilly side of, of Serbia, maybe do some like adventurous things, some sports, or if you just like enjoy hiking, then I think you should go towards the south. So like central Serbia, south Serbia, there's various places like um, natural resorts, kind of like spa places, skiing places too. There's so many and I can start counting them. Maybe you should check out my episode and my podcast, Manja Kava podcast, and you'll see my favorite picks and my friend's favorite picks and you can choose some of them. Or maybe you can see everything. I mean, I'm definitely planning on going to Serbia and traveling inside of Serbia. It's definitely a dream of mine. It was never some sort of aspiration, but the more I traveled, the more I I realized how little I know about Serbia and how little I've seen. I would love to organize a trip with my family. So with my sister and her family and my dad, mom, and potentially my boyfriend that depends, you know, on the schedule and everything. So I think it would be really, really a nice trip. Do you think mermaid meat like, maybe tastes like hmm, red meat or like fish meat? I think both because mermaids should be, should be like, you know, human, fish. So like, 
choose what you want to eat, which part you want to eat. <laughs> Top five favorite dishes, Serbian dishes. I first need to say that Serbian cuisine is a mixture of influences. So some of the dishes that I'm going to mention are probably present in other cultures. So someone's going to be like, oh, but this is also from our country. Like we also eat it. Well, yeah, probably, probably you do. But um, this is also what I eat in Serbia. It's part of our cuisine, part of our meals. So uh, don't be annoyed if I like something that you also maybe have in your culture. I would say I definitely like any type of like burek pita kind of meal. I love pita krompirusha, for example, which is like basically burek with um, potatoes. Uh, I'm vegan, so I'm kind of like limited as to what I can eat in Serbia. So you can find burek or pita with almost everything. Um, meat, cheese, cherries, <sighs> spinach, mushrooms, like really anything. So you can find them in bakeries. Then I would say sarma, even though it's not vegan, I like the combination of sour and salty. Yeah, I just think it's amazing. <laughs> I made a vegan version, so you can also check that one out. Um, I like pasul. I really like our pasul. Uh, I hated it when I was younger, but I started to like it even more, especially when I went away from Serbia. Sorry, pasul is beans, just so you know. Is three enough? Do we need five? You know what? I'm gonna tell you just these three. I'm sure I have more, but I'm saving meals, Serbian meals, for one of our episodes on our podcast. So you're probably gonna find some more details in there. Or over there. Why do you change your personality when you speak Spanish? First of all, where did you see me speak in Spanish? I have one video, I think, where I speak in Spanish and I'm curious. I don't know. I think it's a it's a learner's thing, mistake, because when you start speaking a language, um, you're kind of like influenced by how others speak. I mean, even with English, I'm pretty much influenced by what I've heard. In the earlier stages, you, you're not really aware that you are changing that much. So you're maybe like mostly imitating what you've been hearing. So probably that's why I change personalities. Like I, I immediately go, because I'm using Spanish from Spain, which is when you speak, it's a bit more deep naturally you just go a bit over here you know maybe that's something that's something that some people pointed out to me yeah i don't know i think i'm gonna um, tailor it probably more to my taste so like who i am my personality uh when i feel a bit more comfortable and the more i'm exposed to the language i feel well, my personality is probably going to be very similar to the one in Serbian and in English. Although I don't really know if I am the same in English and Serbian. So I don't know which kind of vibe I give out. So I cannot tell you 100% what my answer is. But yeah, it's just the thing that happens. Are you a sports loving girl? Yes, I am not naturally talented for sports. I do not have an athletic body, but I've always been very thin and I've always been very interested in like moving myself. Um, I get very lazy, that's true, but if I'm in that rhythm of like, I have some sort of routine and I'm running or doing something else, then I love, love sports. It makes me mentally so much happier, so much healthier, so I know how crucial it is as a part of my healthy like lifestyle or like just, I just feel better when I move myself. In terms of sports, it varies what I'm doing, depending depending on what I want to achieve or maybe in which kind of period I am uh, of my life or stage of my life. Before I used to do fencing, um, that was my sports actually gets annoying. So that's something that I was doing as a young girl. I didn't really love it. So I started just like working out at home. I never went to the gym. I think maybe like once or twice. So that gym wasn't my thing. Um, and you can actually see that because I'm quite thin over here. So I'm mostly focused on like cardio in terms of like jogging or like I would do some sort of like jumping yoga. I love yoga too. But there are two things I would love, love, love to know how to do. But I'm just like, the reason why I would love to reach them or like to do them is because I just, I'm so much the opposite of what these two represent. So first one is gymnastics. I am not stretchy at all, at all. Like. I'm the least stretchiest girl ever. So I really, really have to push myself to do that. The second one is karate. 
Uh, it just felt very powerful and I loved also I love the peacefulness of it because you kind of have to be in the zone yeah but I'm definitely not muscular and that's something I'm trying to change right now because I'm really trying to like work out a bit with um, weights too because I'm not used to doing that especially working on my upper body because I have no muscles here nothing I like my legs I like my thighs my belly but just like my arms are pretty much I'm like <laughs> struggling yeah there's nothing over there slowly now but yeah have to work on it and i have to mention i love dancing which is also a kind of sport so i love it what do you love the most about your country aside being your country place you belong to family i know you said in some videos could be picked several things from there but maybe it is nice is nice it is nice even for you and introspection yeah that's true what makes home real home sweet home and how surveys home helps us love even more the language you speak and the culture you've grown up with. Super nice idea. Here I am. <sighs> of course, I would say family. And of course, I would say friends. And I would say culturally, what I really miss is the, the close ties that we have. I mean, sometimes it can be too much for me, but I always feel like I have someone to rely on. I have someone to count on. They're unconditionally there for me be it friends or family, it's a really good feeling. The community side of it too, like, you just feel like you belong there. You have, you know, people that you don't really click with and they're not the best for you, but majority is just there to help you. They're not expecting anything in return. It's just like a given. Of course, I'm your friend, I'm your family member, I'm your cousin or whatever. I'm always there for you, like that unconditional, I'm there. And the willingness to please, which is again, not good sometimes because people can take advantage of it, but people just love spending time with other people. People like feeding other people. <laughs> people like making other people happy, comfortable. They make you feel like you're part of their family, even though you just met them. I think that's the that's the the best thing about Serbia. Yeah, I hope this answers your question. And the last one is urban tribes in Serbia or Balkans. And you know what? Um, I'm not really good at history. I hated it when I was in high school, primary school. It was just really dull, boring, not presented in in a, in an interesting way. But the older I got, I got really interested and i love reading about it uh again i'm not really good at memorizing things but i think this would be a good question for one video or possibly one episode on my podcast so i'm not gonna talk about it right now but thank you for giving me a great idea and i'm definitely gonna explore that yeah guys i think that's it let me check that's it I did not have many questions, but I still took my time to answer because it's Corona time and I have no one to talk to, so you're there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna be back with a vlog and I'm gonna be back with some new videos. Let me know what you want to see. Of course, I ask you that every time. So I'm always gonna try to create something that you find useful, something that you like, and stay tuned. See you soon, bye-bye. I always say bye-bye, positive in Serbian. Pozdrav svima.